Today we're going to diagnose patellofemoral joint pain quickly and easily in a four-step process. Let's go. Okay, so step one of diagnosing patellofemoral joint pain is all about the history. So if you've got a patient who comes in and they've got intermittent pain in the anterior aspect of the knee, which has no obvious mechanism of injury or trauma, it's localized pain at the front of the knee, it's mechanical in nature, and there's an absence of any neurological symptoms. It's aggravated by activities that essentially load the patellofemoral joint, and that's things like squatting, going upstairs, getting out of a low chair, things like that. If you've got all these things going on, then you should have a high index of suspicion that patellofemoral joint is at play. And then we're gonna move on to step two of our four step process. Okay, so step two in diagnosing the patellofemoral joint pain is basically an absence of other conditions. So I'm gonna just show you what I would just do with the patient very quickly. Um, first thing we wanna look at is essentially a full range of motion because when you've got structural pathology in the knee very very rare that you're going to have someone that has a full range of motion that's pain free so simply taking that knee up bending the foot towards the bottom okay so we're just literally feeling through there now you can place your hand onto the joint line as well so then again you can feel the medial joint line as you do this and I'm just putting a bit of overpressure and I'd be asking the patient if they feel okay doing that. Obviously, Shah hasn't got any knee issues on this side at the moment, so um, she's not going to feel pain, but that's what we'll be asking for. And then again, opposite direction, Shah, if you just squash my hand down into the bed, so you're just getting full extension. And I can just put a little bit of overpressure through. One hand sort of underneath uh, the back of the thigh, one hand on the shin and then going down into that position. I'll do it on this leg actually, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're gonna push down onto the tibia whilst I'm pulling upwards through the back of the femur and that's gonna create that full overpressure of extension and just be asking, is there any pain doing that? Again, if there's no pain doing that, that would be a signal that there's an absence of maybe some other conditions like structural pathologies within the knee. Um, the other thing that you can then do is your ligament testing. So I can go through and do my quick ACL test with an anterior draw or a Lachman's, just kind of pick what you prefer. So just a quick Lachman's to see. I can then do a quick Scoopy McMurray's test. So a McMurray's test in full flexion. Again, just ruling out there's anything meniscal going on. Then I can do my valgus and varus tests on the knee. So looking at the ligamentous structures in terms of the MCL and the LCL. I can look at PCL just by going into this position. So I'm essentially just running through my gambit of tests. I can then look at just for palpation through your patella tendon. So if you've got anterior knee pain, which again in patellofemoral joint pain you will have, ruling out anterior structures that's not the patellofemoral joint would be useful so if you go into the patella tendon and that's pain free unlikely to be patella tendonitis again if you go slightly medial and lateral to the patella tendon as well then it's unlikely to be a fat pad impingement because Hoffa's fat pad just sits both medially and laterally to the patella tendon so it's unlikely to be that um, condition as well. So we're just running through our knee tests and basically ruling out that there's anything else structural going on and that would be again a good signifier that it could potentially be a patellofemoral joint pain syndrome. Again the other thing to rule out meniscal stuff is just palpating that joint line. So particularly with medial meniscal problems I'd be palpating through the joint line and just seeing if there's tenderness there versus the other side. I do that laterally as well so again you can feel the lateral joint line on the outside of the knee. Um, but just seeing whether there's, there's any pain there. Again, if your McMurray's was negative, your um, joint line palpation was negative. You can do Thessaly's as well, but if McMurray's is, is negative, there's a full range of motion and there's no palpation, pain or palpation, very unlikely to be meniscal anyway. So you could do Thessaly's, but not really necessary, I don't think, in those sorts of cases. And again, that would all, all be signifiers that there's nothing else going on. So that's our step two, is, is it ruling out other conditions. So with that sort of, gambit of tests we've ruled out other conditions and then we can move on to step three so then step three is looking at a pain provocation test that would signify that there was a patellofemoral joint pain syndrome going on so for this we've just got a couple of tests that i classically use your simple compression test 
So again, if we come behind the knee and we actually put some pressure down through the patella, um, if I'm compressing or pressing down through that patella, just do it this side so you can see better, then, and there's pain, then that would be a signifier that potentially the condition was, was there. Also, when I do this compression test, what I tend to do is a little bit of medial and lateral movement of the patella. So I'm compressing down and just suit slightly moving medial and laterally, and often that will be sore. You can also do that. So Clark's test is actually where you do a bit of compression through there and ask Shah, so if you squeeze your right quad, so Shah, for me, so squash down into the bed, that's it, and then relax. So you would expect if they squash down into the bed and you've got a bit of compression through there, you'd expect there to be pain in and around that patellofemoral joint because there's more stress underneath that kneecap area, which then is causing their symptoms. And the other thing we can do, obviously, is our functional test, which is step four. Okay, so step four is going to be our functional test for patellofemoral joint pain. So again, you don't have to be too complex with this. I think you can just do some very, very basic ones that are going to give you very quickly whether they're causing issues. Most of the time with these sorts of conditions, people are going to report that getting out of a chair feels painful, deep squatting feels painful, lunging, that sort of stuff. So stairs, another classic one that feels sore. So all I would do in this scenario with a patient is say, if you go shoulder width apart with your feet shot, arms across your chest, and then just literally stand up for me. And then sit down, It's good. So again, we're just gonna get a patient to do two or three, or one to five reps usually is what I would do. And then just look at um, one side versus the other, look at whether there's any valgus, so any moving of the knee in, in ways that we wouldn't expect or are different on the side that's painful. And then the test I like to use even more than that is now we're gonna do a single leg version of that and that puts a lot more pressure through, usually a lot harder, usually patients struggle with it a little bit more, and so let's have a look at that. So if you stand on your right leg shot and then lift your, yep, perfect, and then just stand up for me on that one leg, it's good, and then sit down again. So again, this is where I'm much more gonna come around the front, I'm gonna look at that knee, I'm gonna look at whether there is that valgus shift. People talk about valgus being this big, horrible thing, I don't think it necessarily is, but it's something we do want to be aware of, and we do want to look at it versus the other side. So if you've got a big valgus on that side that's painful, then it, it could be a factor. Again, not the only factor, and it's not the be all and end all, but it's something we want to be aware of. Um, and we would do one to five reps on that side, and then shall I do it on the other side? And then back down again, perfect. And then we would compare sides. And look, I think the key thing as well is looking at strength with these things. The other thing with femoral joint pain, so if you had um, no pain Obviously, we've talked about, in step one, we've talked about history. Step two, we've talked about ruling out other conditions. Step three, we've talked about pain provocation test. And then step four, we've got functional tests. So if you've got the history of patellofemoral joint pain, you've got no other structural faults in step two, you've got some pain on some compressive tests, or and or some pain on your functional tests, you're pretty much dealing with a patellofemoral joint pain. Now, the question is really then how to treat that. That's where I would go much more into looking with my assessments, looking at things like um, functional strength. So looking at the hamstring strength, looking at the, the um, calf strength, looking at quad strength, looking at your ankle mobility, looking at the way someone runs. So that all those things would be part of my assessment, but purely on diagnosis, these four steps is all you would need. I'll do another video as well looking at more of the um, biomechanical uh, assessments of a patellofemoral joint pain and also on then the treatment of that as well. If you're interested in that, then click subscribe and, and the like button and then you'll see the videos going forwards. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.